Hello, my name is Brady. Welcome, welcome back. If you've been here before, well, you know the deal. If you haven't been here, well, there's not much of a deal, honestly. Hi, we're just gonna sit here and talk about cinematography on my living room floor. So diving straight into things, diving into the nitty gritty and all of that, lately I've been thinking that I've been spending a lot of time getting dialed in on my lighting part of cinematography, which don't get me wrong, is very important of cinematography, but I was so dialed into it that I almost forgot that there are so many other aspects that play into cinematography that make a beautiful cinematic image. So I just want to sit here and break down, obviously not a crazy in-depth video, but kind of a, a, a sped up version of just some tips that you can be conscious of when shooting to improve the look of your image. So backing it up, it's important to know that cinematography is really the just art of storytelling visually. So your job, our job as a cinematographer is to convey whatever emotion we are trying to convey visually. So I wanna sit here and just talk about some tips that can help improve your cinematography. So I wanna dive straight into it. Uh, I guess we can call it number one, composition. As a cinematographer, composition is very, very important. It's really what your image, what your framing is going to look like. So using tips like uh, symmetry, uh, Wes Anderson films, I'm sure you've seen a lot of symmetry, having everything on the left side look like the right side. Also, uh, say rule of thirds, I'm sure we've all heard of it. You've got the grid lines that are here, keeping your image somewhere on the rule of thirds or your subject rather, somewhere on the rule of thirds, is gonna naturally give kind of a, a nice, even balanced feel to your image. Also, you wanna say, give your subject headroom. If your subject is kind of like way down here, that kind of feels weird. Of course, unless you want your subject to feel small, you would maybe give them a lot of headroom. That's the thing, uh, with cinematography, rules are meant to be broken. So these are just kind of uh, tips, guidelines, and definitely not firm set in stone rules. Or say leading lines, if you've got a, a row of trees in your shot, and that's just like you see them fading off into the distance, those are leading lines and those can kind of bring the eyes from the outside of the frame into the center of the frame. So moving on, you can also maybe call it composition or we can call it its own number two. You wanna have depth to your image, you wanna have layers. And what I mean by layers, say you've got me. I'm here, I'm the subject, I'm a layer. And then moving back, you've got a light, plant over there, that's another layer. And then you've got the window and the trees and all that outside, you've got more layers to your frame. So having depth to your frame keeps the eye wandering through. So moving on to number three, we've got camera movement. Camera movement is very, very important to show the feeling of this scene. So as a viewer is watching a film, it's almost like their eyes are through the camera's eyes. So say you've got a handheld camera movement. It's gonna be like shaky movie or maybe a lot of jitteriness or uneasiness. And this could be great for like a fast paced action scene or if you wanna have like uneasiness uh, uh, or chaos, you would have a lot of camera movement, have the camera handheld maybe, and just swing around like you're following somebody. But on the contrast of that, say we wanna go steady. Maybe we could go on a dolly and just have these very slow movements, kind of maybe to show like the feeling of being calm or relaxed or not a lot going on. It's smooth, it's controlled. So again, we're portraying the feeling of the scene with camera movement. Or also put your camera on a tripod, put it on sticks right here, and that can allow the eyes to really look at the details of an image without having to follow anything around. It just keeps them focused on one spot. So moving on, I know I said it in the beginning, that it's not everything, but lighting still does play a very, very important role within cinematography. So moving into it, say you've got a dark thriller, something horror, something scary, you're probably not gonna have this very bright, white, high key look. You probably want a lot of this dark, low key contrast. But then to contrast that, say you've got a love movie, something happy, a comedy, something like that, you'll probably opt to have a very brightly lit, high key scene. So additionally, you've also got lighting direction. You can have a very edgy side light, making cool catch lights in the eyes, or you can have a very front lit, call it a beauty light, something like that. So playing around with the lighting direction also plays a big role on the lighting in your image. And then additionally, hard light, soft light, really altering the quality of your light. If you've got a rugged, grungy old character, an old man who's been through 17 different wars, he's weathered, he's wrinkled, you might wanna have a hard light casting in on your subject or play that into the script so they really show their wrinkles, their edges, their imperfections. Versus if you've got this gentle, frail old man who is so innocent and nice and calm and gentle, you might want a very beautiful soft light across his face just to show that he's just this young boy at heart and he's got a soft, 
skin quality to him. So just throwing out examples, quality of light, direction of light, uh, contrast of light, that all plays a great role into your frame. So then say your lens choice. Your lens choice is very, very important. It's actually very fun to try out different lenses and different focal lengths and different depths of field. So I kind of want to add this all into one tip, we'll call it. Start with the focal length. So say you want to be really uncomfortably close to somebody. It's uncomfortable to be very up close to someone. So you maybe go for a wide lens and get them like very close. So opting for a wide lens could be good if you're if you want somebody to feel uncomfortable or like very pressured or disoriented. But then to contrast that, you'd maybe want to use a tighter lens to portray like a beautiful portrait. A lot of portrait focal lengths are anywhere from like 50 to 100 millimeters. So that'll add this very beautiful look to their face and this really nice soft compression. So there really are a lot of different things that focal length can do to your image. I can't put that all into one video. It would be a long video, but focal length is very important. But then also to contrast that, your uh, depth of field or your iris aperture, whatever you may refer to it as, if you have a shallow depth of field, it could have like this feeling of like you're in your character's world and nothing else around them matters. Kind of everything is muffled. Say they're really focusing a lot on something. You could have a very shallow depth of field where the background is really blurry. But maybe if you've got a lot of people in the image that you wanna draw attention to, or things way, way in the background that you wanna draw attention to, you would have a deep focus, something like F8, F11, something like that to keep all of this in focus as well as your subject. So all of these tips, really could deserve their own video. There's so much information on all of them. So I apologize, I can't break down each and every single one of them in depth, but it's just to get the gears turning, just to get you thinking, just to get me thinking even, that cinematography is the art of storytelling. So there's not always just like one cut and dry method to get a cinematic image. So it's helpful to experiment. I've done so much experimenting, just playing around with different qualities of light, different color temperatures of light. There I go talking about lighting again. It's just, it's so in my head. But also like camera movement, lens choices, composition, all of these things. And it's really just experimenting, trial and error, trying things and seeing what you do and don't like, or looking online and getting inspiration and watching movies and just trying new things and seeing how it feels to you when you're capturing it that certain way. So I hope that makes sense. But that's all, I just wanted to sit down and talk about cinematography tips for you guys today. I hope you are doing fantastic and uh, I guess that's probably gonna do it for this video, but I will see you in the next one.